Hello everyone, welcome to Adrian Snary on Learning and today I'm joined by Isha. Hello Isha, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you so much for having me today. It's such a pleasure. Yeah, oh, it's a pleasure to have you on here. And uh, once, when you suggested to uh, to do this podcast, I was like straight away, I was like, yes, that'd yeah, be fantastic. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, and especially with the subject matter, which is something that I'm hugely interested in. And I don't think of... Um, talked about it on the podcast before except perhaps in brief snippets but the mm -hmm. uh we thought we'd first start off discussing mm -hmm. the multiverse and dimensions and all the um layers i guess that's out there that we're perhaps not aware of on a conscious 3d level so yeah we'll have a bit of a chat about that yeah what cool yeah that sounds yeah. awesome it's one of my favorite topics so sure. i've been looking forward to it and where are you at with it now it's something you said you've been like working with and, and looking at yeah. recently and yeah so for me i guess it has been largely uh experiential mm -hmm. uh, i think the first time i ever experienced or became aware that there was even another dimension to what we're living in now is probably about two, two and a half years ago. And I was just meditating in my house. Mm -hmm. And um, I used to very strongly work with the Merkaba light body field. So mm -hmm. I'd get into my meditative space and I would just um, call in the different energies. And then this one time I found myself in this total blissed out state. And I hear this voice that says you're in the 13th dimension. So of course I did the most natural thing was just freak out <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't know there was anything beyond, you know, what we had. Like I had some understanding of the spirit realm and, you know, you hear about mediums and that kind of thing. So I did believe sure. in some of that, but nothing like 13th dimension. Right. So I, I went on Google and I Googled 13th dimension and after about maybe an hour or so, I found this one website that said, oh, the 13th dimension is um, pure universal consciousness. And I was like, yes, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah, nice. And so that was the first time I guess I was introduced to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had probably one similar experience after that where I, I found myself traveling through some different stargates. But then the whole thing got pushed aside for a good couple of years until quite recently. Mm -hmm. uh, and then more recently, I guess, I started working on some channeling. Mm -hmm. And that's when a lot of information started coming through. And I realized that there's no way in this universe that we are alone because there is so much out there. And I've studied probability and statistics. Mm -hmm. And the chances of us being the only life forms, the only reality in this universe it's just not plausible. Sure. It's just not feasible to say that humans are it, that this is it. Mm. So once I started expanding my, um, I guess I started including different belief systems mm -hmm. to allow to, myself to have different references for things that other people might consider to be a little bit wacky or out there. Mm. Um, and the channeling definitely allowed me to have my own experience of it because it's mm. one thing for somebody to say, yes you know these dimensions exist and you can i know people experience them on substances i mm -hmm. think that's a very common um gateway to it mm -hmm. but for me to actually experience it and to to be in that state i can now say okay yes there is more out there than mm. the, than the third dimension reality that we're living in sure so i guess what i've learned in more recent months is that humanity is going through the ascension process which you are familiar with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and humanity is going into the fifth dimension but there is a lot more beyond that i think i think the way the information that i've received is that humanity is in a way quite I hate to use the word behind but we're a little bit behind the rest of the galaxy sure. And so we have a lot of beings out there that are assisting us in this process. Mm -hmm. And I think now we've got to a point where a lot of people have opened up their own channels, their own energy fields to be able to access information from star systems such as the Pleiades, Arcturus, Sirius, things like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these beings are telling us that they're here to help us, they're here to assist us. And it brings them a lot of joy to be a part of this process with us. Right. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, there's definitely, uh, definitely a lot to it. And I think what we're seeing now is more and, more, more and more awareness is probably the word and education about the, not only the possibilities, but we're also um, really becoming aware of other people's experiences, you know, mm -hmm. both, like you said, either with a 
substance or through meditation or yoga or whatever it might be where something is created within the body that allows like a uh, an opening or uh, like a, a psychic tendril into like a, another dimension you know another universe and that's where I feel um, you know this is wisdom that um, is brought back from there mm-hmm. you know, and that's where then other people can go oh okay hang on there's maybe something there's, there's maybe something to this and then they go on and have their own experience and then have their own thing um, you know definitely uh, yeah, probably say even three years ago, I would have been open-minded to the um, possibility that there's m- multiple universes and there's different entities, but I would—I never sort of really truly believed it. Mm-hmm. But I guess the experiences I've had and me only have really shown me that that is definitely the case. You know, so um, yeah, I really feel like it's it's. It's great to be able to um, hear someone else's experience and get it, some understanding of it. But yeah, until you have your own true experience with it and know what that really feels like, then I don't think you can ever really be fully aware of what yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it's really hard to... Um, it, you can't force an experiential understanding of something. Mm. I think it's something that occurs when consciousness wants it to occur. And I think there's a lot of... Um, do you, I don't know. Do you push th- out there. Yeah, there could be. But if you made a decision that you wanted to, that if you said, okay, I want to make a concerted effort to experience this, I think you, either through I think psychedelics you can. I think, your, I think your intention definitely plays a very powerful role in, in creating the reality around you. But at the same mm. time, I mean, there are monks who have been sitting there meditating nonstop for 50 years and still haven't reached the state of enlightenment. And it makes sure. you wonder why that is, whether there is a greater plan out there or whether... Um, they're using the wrong methods you perhaps, as your or... identity have have full creative control over your life mm, so yeah. and that's something I've been very um, deeply exploring the last few weeks because mm. when I started um, I guess seeing these different realities I started to think well what part do I actually have to play in that reality mm. and I think I realized that in one way we have a lot less freedom than we think we do but when I mm. say that I mean we as as the bodies and the humans that are sitting here with our minds having mm. this conversation, the mind doesn't really know what it's doing. Mm. I don't think the mind really controls the life because no. the mind works on cause and effect. The mm. mind works on, I've put effort into doing something and thus this thing has happened. Right. Whereas I think if you step back and look at it from the point of consciousness, you can say, well, actually consciousness wanted to have the experience. Mm. And yes, the, the shared reality was designed such that you could bring that, that feeling that you wanted to experience. You could create the entire physical reality to make that happen, to facilitate that. Mm. But whether or not the decision comes from the third dimension or whether it comes from elsewhere and then is only permeated in the third dimension, Mm. I think is where you start thinking, well, who's calling the shots here? Sure. You know? (laughs) Sure. Yeah. And if we ever really got a true understanding of what that is, what's going on, it could have huge ramifications for the way we live our life and the way we um, treat not only ourselves, but other people as well. Mm. Um, Not just other people, but uh, the environment, uh, animals, the earth etc yeah so um so you had this experience with you know through meditation was it like any particular type of meditation that you were doing so at the time? it was the merkaba light body meditations that i was working mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. um it's and what's basically, involved with that um so i i started working with these diamond energetic discs mm-hmm. and they have the merkaba you, you know what the merkaba is yeah. so the upper tetrahedron and then you got the lower tetrahedron and then you've got the one in the middle yes. and they spin in different directions mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that energy field is essentially like a vehicle mm-hmm. it's, it's a multi-dimensional vehicle it acts like a uh in some ways you, like a starship sure. and it allows you to access different dimensional realities mm-hmm. so i obviously didn't know that when i started working with it mm-hmm. um but as i work with it more and more probably after about two years of working with that energy system i started accessing these really blissed out states and mm-hmm. i started realizing that um i'm probably traveling to other dimensions similar to astral travel but it's not mm. going to the astral realm because the astral realm is its own fourth dimensional reality sure so right. this one i think lets you go to different um i guess different dimensions yeah with all that there is like any any possibility any any point in time or space i haven't personally experienced 
going to any um, particular time and space in terms mm. of a physical movement. Mm. I've certainly retrieved information about things from that state, but I think it is possible. I mm. think in order for it to be more easily accessible, I think the planetary system, the energetic system surrounding the planet, the matrix needs to shift a little bit more okay. because I see that as being highly possible. And I know mm. from different dreams and visions I've had in ancient Lemuria and Atlantis, they mm. were very capable of doing that. They're very capable of um, harnessing time and space for their purposes. Sure. I'm not sure if you've heard of like the Lemurian crystals have i don't know too much about them though yeah, yeah so they say that when the lemurian continent was sinking mm -hmm. they took these crystals and they encoded them with data but mm. because they had a very short amount of time they had about i think twelve thousand years mm. which is a long time because back then they lived to you know thirty thousand years so mm. it was within their lifetime that they knew that their continent was going to sink mm. so they wanted to encode all this data into crystals so crystals contain light information mm -hmm. But they were able to grow these crystals very quickly mm -hmm. by bypassing time and space because they would, they would essentially go up towards the seventh and eighth dimensions mm -hmm. and then come back. And mm -hmm. it was very easy for them to do because right. even we as, as people, we're multidimensional beings. I know mm -hmm. that we have a very um, limited perception in the third mm -hmm. dimension reality. It's all but like this and yeah, this. Yeah, but, yeah, this physical reality. Yeah. But... It's part of the ascension process. I think people are remembering that we are so much more than that and sure. that we don't have to be limited by this, especially when we get to the point where the entire planet and everything on the planet is in the fifth dimension. Mm. It will be a very different experience because then you'll be able to consciously go down into the fourth and the third mm. without, um, well, with a lot of ease, I guess. It won't mm. be a very challenging thing to do that. And mm. there are people right now on the planet that are doing it. Mm. There are people who are just going back and forth very consciously and the energetic conditions on the planet are allowing for that to occur. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think there's still a little bit more that needs to be shifted. And right. part of it is to do with that collective consciousness because mm. collective consciousness is very powerful and collective mm. consciousness does allow you in many ways to steer the direction or the course of where humanity is going. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. this whole ascension process would not be occurring if A, the earth hadn't screamed out for it to occur and B, if collective consciousness of humanity hadn't agreed to it. Sure. So every single person on this planet right now has actually agreed to be a part of this ascension process mm -hmm. because you, have, you do have free will. Mm -hmm. And this is what we were saying before, where if you, if you look at free will from the point of view of your highest self, your highest self has dictated what it would like to experience and thus what you would like to experience and puts into place the milestones, the experiences, the events that allow things to unfold. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in synchronicity. Mm. It's just one sign after another. Sure. You know? And yeah. if, if I just look at my own life, there yeah. is no way that wasn't orchestrated by some wave of a magic wand because <laughs> there's just no way that I, it wasn't parts of it weren't planned right. it's just it's almost too good to be true yeah sure you know, if i left the entire thing to chance and probability it yeah. just doesn't make sense yeah it was like it was written down and it's yeah. like this is going to happen next and this is going to happen next and this yeah. is going to lead you to this and this is going to lead to this yeah 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 so with the lemurian crystals um so they had the twelve thousand years to do it and really implant and implant and encode what sort of information was it they basically yeah, wanted to have everything about their civilization in these crystals. And I actually okay. have a few of these crystals at home and I've been working with them and I have received the odd flash or two of, of what occurs. Okay. Um, but essentially, the main thing I get from them is the feeling, the feeling life that they had in, in Lemuria. Because mm. in Lemuria, they had a very strong connection, A, to the planet and mm. B, to each other. Mm -hmm. And they, they weren't that interested in humanity. And when I say humanity, I mean the constructs of the mind and the constructs, the 3D constructs that have been placed here on this planet to allow us to have certain experiences mm. from a shared um, perception. Because sure. without that shared perception, it's like being in a massive cloud of space. We're all standing on the edge of the universe and things are constantly appearing and disappearing very quickly, mm. which is fun. But there was that, I guess there was a desire for consciousness to experience something that was a bit more solid, that was a bit more grounded mm. to see what would happen. Sure. Hence the earth. Yeah. Um, in Lemuria, though, I mean, they were living in the fifth dimension. They were fifth dimensional beings. And the planet has always been in the fifth dimension. It mm. was just humanity that fell as a result of uh, technology misuse. And there's a whole lot of stories out mm. there about why Atlantis different fell. Different theories. And, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, but yep. essentially they were working with different energy systems. Some say that yep. it was actually the Merkaba one. They tried to spin it in the other direction. Yeah. And then that was 
how it occurred. Have um, you have you seen the Spirit Science series? No, I haven't actually. So one of the theories was, and this is definitely out there, but like all this <laughs> stuff is, but like um, when the Martian, there was a civilization on Mars mm-hmm. and it was actually Mars, um, the, um, when their planet was destroyed or inhabitable, I should say, they came down to um, Earth and inhabited a part of Atlantis and they were the ones working with the Merkaba, but they were trying okay. to create a... Um, so we have Christ consciousness that we live in now. They're trying to create their own separate Christ consciousness and doing it through this power tool. Anyway, it fucked up and it, and it sent <laughs> us all from a fifth dimensional, um, um, fifth dimensional being or state, I should say, in back into a third. Yeah. And that's why we've had to like regrow again and like remember I, I guess is a bit yeah the best way to I've heard it. that as well I have heard that one yeah. um I can't verify it myself because it's not one that I've seen or yeah, been shown but sure. it's definitely one of the theories out there yeah. <laughs> there's other um there's a guy have you heard of Graham Hancock he wrote no. um he wrote an amazing book back in 1995 called uh jeez amazing book and I've forgotten the name of it I've got it up there somewhere um um fingerprints of the gods Okay. And he's just recently released the sequel, 20 years later, called um, The Magicians of the Gods. But his belief was that it was, you know, there was that time of Lemuria and Atlantis, but it was a, um, a catastrophe of a meteorite came mm-hmm. down and basically wiped out civilization. So wiped out all that we were, all that we knew, all this information that we had. And then we've basically just had to start from scratch again. Mm-hmm. And, and it meant starting from a like a, a low sort of base resonance, which is this, well... Some say it's the third dimension, but you can say it's the three dimensions plus light. So it's really fourth dimension that we're in. Um, yeah, and we're working our way back up mm-hmm. to fifth now. That's the current, the process that we're going through. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Like there's all this information coming out about you know, twelve thousand years ago, meteorite struck. There was massive floods, and you know all these tales throughout history that we have of. Um, uh, Noah's Ark and yeah, you know, I was just about to mention that one because I yeah. really feel like the whole story of Noah's Ark is the sinking of uh, Lemuria. Yeah, it yeah. just makes so much sense yeah, that that does. would be what it's pointing towards because yeah. that was a massive flood and both continents they sank within uh, about three hundred years of each other. Right. So the whole planet was pretty much gone under. Yeah, yeah. It's After having such an mm. amazing uh, impact and and it's just funny how like. I mean, we, we don't know for certain. There's no, been no physical evidence, evidence of Atlantis or Lemuria, but there's just like this feeling that people get, mm. you know, and, um, and, but especially when you tie it in with the fact that we know there's been major catastrophes on this earth and we know that certain things have happened. And we've all, all got this, like, I think it's like a thirst to um, better ourselves. We were constantly trying to better ourselves and, and become more than we are, mm-hmm. which, not that... Some argue that we don't need to be any better than yeah, we are. Can I can I mention that point? Because sure. I really feel like this idea of having to grow and improve and you know move up the ladder, I feel like that is such a human thing to do. Sure. Because I think once you get away from that and you realise that you are consciousness and that God is, you know, living itself through every single one of us mm. then how could it not be anything but perfect in every permeation of yeah. of whatever experience has been created on this planet and I think that shocks a lot of people because then you could say well what about the rapists what about the murderers what about all those people that are doing all those bad things in humanity but if mm. you genuinely believe that all of it is consciousness and you don't come from a viewpoint of separation yeah and judgment which is then everything yeah, is valid everything yeah. is an experience sure. and everything is uh, I guess everything becomes okay. Mm. And I think that is not okay for a lot of people. Mm. I think that, that confronts a lot of people mm. because there is still that judgment around a lot of experiences that humanity is having. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not to say that there aren't rules because when this planet was first put into place, there were rules that governed how things would occur. For example, the karmic cycle. Mm -hmm. So when you have the karmic cycle, there is very much a, um, I guess a system of ruling where, you know, an eye for an eye or that kind of, Mm. that kind of judgment and that kind of punishment system almost. Um, And I think that's had its place. I think that's very much been useful in allowing souls to grow very quickly because you can get a lot of growth done with karma. Mm. You can get a lot of shit done, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But 
I think once you step away from that, you realize that the whole cycle, you look at the entire story in front of you and it's like a painting. I love to mm. imagine it like a big painting where if you're looking at the karmic cycle, you're honing in on this tiny little, you know, a few of those little pixels and you're saying, oh, if I put a red splotch over there and I put a yellow over there and I kind of see what happens and mm. you get to see the ins and outs of those close interactions. So you get the story mm. from that point of view. Mm. But imagine if you then step back and you see the whole painting mm. and even though some parts might be changing or you might go and fix this bit over here or you might change this bit over there, the overall painting just is what it is. Mm. And you sure. can say that it, you can say that by changing one speck of the painting, the whole thing changes. And mm. I think that's that interconnectedness because the painting will never be the same again. Mm. But at the same time, there's a sense of wholeness to it. There's a sense of completeness. Mm. And then when the, the painting can just sit there, you can change it. You can not change it. You can do whatever you like with it. You mm. can go and look at another part of the painting. You can look at one corner. You can look at another corner. And it doesn't. It's just not as big of a deal. Mm. Sure. When you're seeing the bigger picture, things are just not that big mm. of a deal. I think it's because we really live in a very, we see the world as being, or the universe, our life as being very dualistic. Mm. So there's like good and bad and everything in between. And I guess something that I've really been contending with over the last few days especially is, because yeah, it's definitely, you can definitely look at it as um, it's all one consciousness and there's no right or wrong and, and don't judge because that is, there is separateness there. And that's just something that we have to contend with in this, um, I'm going to say fourth dimension that we're in because I believe it, yeah, it's three dimensions plus light. So for me, that's, right. four, four, that's when I say 4D, that's where we're in now. Um, we do contend with, there is a separateness. A lot of people do feel like they're, they are separate. That could also be just because that's why we're being conditioned as well to mm -hmm. feel like it's us against them and all that sort of bullshit. And I think that's something that is changing. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel like it's up to us as human beings how we decide we want to um, view it. I mean, if we want to view it as, um, you know, yeah, like the rapists and the murderers of the world that not to judge because, you know, it's all one consciousness anyway, I think that's fine. But if you do want to judge, if you do want to judge that, I, I feel that's fine as well because it's yeah. all and then part of the same thing. It's not judging the judgment. That's because the thing. Because otherwise that's you can judge do. the judgment and then the judgment is not okay. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the whole thing about in fifth dimension and higher. Mm. There is no judgment. There is no judgment on judgment. Sure. And so from a place of that, everything is valid. And when mm. everything is valid it opens the door to infinite potential mm. because there is nothing that cannot be done, nothing that cannot be accessed, nothing that isn't already present in the present moment mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's all we ever have. Sure. I know that right now we have the perception of linear time, mm. but that's not, we're pretty much the only dimension that has that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's very, I see the time as being very, to me, it's very toroidal, you know, the toroidal field, mm -hmm. like the hourglass shape. Mm -hmm. So like our past comes out from this our center point is the heart of time and space and our past goes out and around back in and our future does the same thing as well mm -hmm. and and yeah just i think in this reality we really can't have a true understanding of that unless we're very lucky to um channel something or have someone channel for us or you experience I think a that's where meditation medicine. is really helpful though. Medicine? i think meditation uh, meditation is, yeah yeah meditation is the a space where you a tool that you can use to access that feeling i mm. think it's a tool for remembering and there are lots of tools out there there are people sure. doing all sorts of different things some people do it through dancing like i find dancing for me is one yeah. way that of pretty much being in a meditative state mm -hmm. um but even just yeah you know you're sitting down regular type of meditation or yeah. things like yoga or anything there yeah. are lots of different tools out there sacred geometry mm -hmm. um there are many different ways of accessing it mm. i think what humanity is doing at the moment is they're searching for that again because they're starting to realize that there is something out there mm. that there is something um beyond what they see as is this mm. you know sure yeah, there's an intrinsic awareness of that, but we don't really quite know what it is, mm. I find. And that's what, well, I think that's what we're trying to progress to. Like, we, we understand that there's something over the horizon. Mm -hmm. Like, we've heard whispers about, to say, for example, like another landmass or whatever it is, but it's just another form of consciousness. And we're like, okay. Because I think human beings, we are by nature very inquisitive. Mm. And, you know, we're very, um, what's also the word, like, 
Well, there's we, a we thirst like for to. knowledge, isn't there? There's yeah. very much a thirst for knowledge. And I think part of it comes from the fact that we don't necessarily have all the knowledge. Mm. And I think that that was part of the design. I mean, the whole design of this earth was so that we could be here and we could experience what it would be like to be in the state of not love because mm. everything outside of this dimension and higher is in the space of love and oneness mm. so consciousness will say right well what would happen if all of a sudden i decided i wanted to be not that mm. and that's when the duality comes in because yeah. then all of a sudden you have like the black dot and the white cloud and you go oh sure. which one am i yeah. and it's actually both but from different points of view. Yeah, right. Definitely, yeah. But with that, though, as well, I mean, I like that analogy. If you have a dark room, you just need a little bit of light in that room to light it all up. But mm. if it's, you know, if you have a light room, it takes a lot, a lot of darkness to be able to do it. So I think that's for me, shows that us as human beings and in this universe that we inhabit, we definitely are light. We are definitely more love. There's no doubt about it. But yeah, we do have the capability of, of that darkness as well. Mm -hmm. And I, to me personally, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. you know, I, like, I like the fact that we can, it's like a, yeah, I really feel it's like a training or something, a way to be able to, um, yeah, like you said, really be able to understand. It's like that thing of having zero and 100 on a, on a ruler to know what 50 is, you know, yeah, to get a better definitely. understanding of ourselves and of consciousness. Mm. Um, and that's very much principles of sacred geometry, like with flower of life, mm -hmm. you know, um, God source energy, getting to know itself had to create limitations you know, create a circle and another circle. And, and that's very much a, the reality that we live in mm. at the moment. Yeah. I love sacred geometry. I just, so do I, I find so it much. so powerful. And I, like, yeah. I've seen, um, I've seen the fundamental makeup of the universe from sacred geometrical patterns. Mm. So I had this vision once where if you just imagine beams of light, Mm -hmm. and they're sort of intersecting with each other and the angle and the geometry at which they intersect uh, determines what type of molecule or what type of um, solid reality they can create. Oh, right. So, and you, you experienced that, I've do you mean? Seen, yeah, okay. yeah, I've actually seen yeah. it. Um, sure. It's, I've seen it as part of the creationary process of the universe yep. because if you go up to the highest level of... Well, I wouldn't even say highest. I would say if you go to the lightest level of creation mm -hmm. it everything is just pure energy everything is pure um not even consciousness this is like absolute point of creation before mm. there was anything before there was it's, it's everything no but it's and, and everything nothing. and nothing yeah. exactly and it is like a void space yeah. and then you imagine this <clears throat> tiny little spark of light that just comes out mm. and then you get another one that's floating off into the distance and mm. the two of them cross each other and then in that interaction something occurs mm. and that that light information can choose to create something of itself mm. so it can either keep passing through it can choose to stop and create something for example the first hydrogen molecule mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it could um interact with something else and create a different type of particle mm. and it's so fascinating how this one this one uh form of energy can become so many different things mm. and i think see science is only just starting to realize this now but mm -hmm. energy is very um movable mm -hmm. and i mean einstein says you know you cannot you can never destroy energy you can only ever change its form and sure. so if everything starts off as this very pure light energy mm. then in the in the interactions and the geometrical patterning of the way that it interacts that is mm. what governs what that mo mo molecule is going to be that is right. what governs um its characteristics sure so i guess where sacred geometry becomes very powerful is it takes those divine imprints like i really believe that sacred geometry is source divine energy imprinted in a physical form because mm. that is a very easy way that makes it accessible to humanity mm. because you can't tell a lot of people are oh, just tapping to source energy. Mm. They're going to be like, what do you want about? Sure. So sacred geometry takes that energy and it brings it into something that's tangible, something that something you can, we can look understand. at. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, of course, a lot of people have the feeling life as well. They have right. the, um, the feeling they get when they look at different codes. I mean, mm. I'm not sure if you've ever experimented with different types of geometry. So the flower of life, the... Um, like the Sri Yantra, things mm, like that. But yeah, they have a very different feel to them. Oh, definitely, you know, yeah. Some of them are just 
pure love. Mm. Some of them seem to be a bit more purposeful and that maybe they're, they're clearing energies or they're yeah. solidifying something or they are um, maybe creating or manifesting something. So they sure. all seem to have different purposes. Yeah. Um, like I know, for example, I channeled sacred geometry codes not too long ago and the ones that I have, they're for DNA activation mm -hmm. because in the time of Lemuria, they had 12 strands and beyond a fully mm. activated light code DNA. Yep. Whereas in the fall of humanity, we got stripped down to just two mm. telomeres were cut off, you know, things like sure. that. So there are codes that are given to us um, from different star systems. Like for example, the Acturians often will send through their crop circle codes and things like that. Mm -hmm. And some of them are for things like the DNA and for increasing the general vibration of the planet. Mm -hmm. So these codes are very powerful because it is a way it's a tool or uh, something that holds the energy. Sure. It can hold the energy very right. um, in its purest form. Yeah. And do so in a mathematical way that we can understand and relate yeah. to as human beings because we can't really understand it on a level, anything above that. Exactly. Yeah. It, I think anything beyond that is too abstract for the human mind. Sure. And without the correct reference points in your mind, it's very hard to grasp onto something. Yeah. See, the mind is designed. If you look at information processing theory, it will say that the mind can only capture if something if it can link it to something it already knows mm. because otherwise you have experiences where like people interdimensional travel at night all the time in their sleep and have yeah. no recollection of it in the sure. morning because there is no reference point for yeah. it and what so the fuck no is that reference point <laughs> yeah. you can't you just can't have it and sure. so things like sacred geometry things they give you some of those reference points even conversations yeah. like this yeah. somebody will listen to this and it will give them a reference point so that if they were then to astral travel or something else they'll go oh that's what i did and mm. then they'll remember it sure so yeah. i think you know, it comes back to the education the talking some of that mm. really helps because it like it lets you get the mind on board mm. if the mind is not on board the chance of you retaining any of this stuff mm. is zilch no it's just not how the mind it's not the programming of the mind to do that yeah for sure for sure mm. yeah the, the first time i ever saw the flower of life i cannot remember when i was now it must have been about five or six years ago the only way i can describe it it's going to sound weird but like i fell in love that was the only it's way it's such I describe a loving it. energy isn't yeah. it that, that flower of life that geometry in particular yeah. i'm pretty sure is the fundamental makeup of the universe it's such a um it's very aesthetically pleasing just to the eye it's very aesthetically pleasing but it's got this balance of feminine and masculine energy mm -hmm. to it as well and it's got like a um like it to me it just represents everything all that all that is and it wasn't until like afterwards where i did some more research into the flower of life and i understood the premise about how it, you know why it was created and i was like oh why that makes total created? sense basically so god could know himself Right. God, God, source energy could, could know itself, well, that could makes experience. Sense. So that is yeah. source energy, yeah, in its external form, right? That's right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you've got um, God was like God energy was like everything and nothing, and it wanted to be able to experience itself, but it couldn't because it was everything. So it created a circle, and then out it gave it like a gave it like a boundary, and then it created another circle to understand more, and another circle, and then we had the seed of life, which is like the one circle with the six um yeah. outer circles and that's like that's the pattern of creation so that's like in other words the seven the seven days of creation is a is the seed of life and then it went out further and further and further and further and further and further like to the infinite really um that's so interesting i didn't know that but yeah. it makes so much sense yeah and that's exactly how i experience the flower of life so that makes sense that that's the creation pattern right there. Yeah, sure. I'll, say, I'll after this podcast, I'll, I'll put a link. I'll put a link up for this actually for everyone, and I'll show you. It's a really good um, spirit science episode where it goes into it. Just goes for like a few minutes and explains exactly how it all went down. Um, but yeah, I had another. So sacred geometry has been a really important part of my life, and you know, over the last few years especially. And I had an experience. I was in London uh, a couple of years ago now, and it was ayahuasca ceremony over there, and I went into what well, I can only like a. No, no one or nothing told me it was the fifth dimension, but I'm, I know it was the fifth dimension that I was in. I could feel it. But I, like, I know it was the fifth dimension, but I was still within, the, still within this reality. But I could see this reality, this fourth dimension for all that it is. And all it, all it was was just series, a series, a series of hexagonal shapes. Mm -hmm. Like, that's all it was. And I was doing this thing where I had my hand like this and there was like a chair over there. I know this is going to sound crazy to some people out there, but <laughs> nothing that crazy in the universe me, anymore. <laughs> yeah, believe me, this is true. And I was I was moving my hand. I could see 
all the like the makeup of this reality just being these hexagonal shapes but the closer um the space was to like a physical object either my hand or that chair the larger the hexagonal shapes got and then the space in between they got smaller and smaller these hexagonal shapes and i knew that like the smallest point the smallest of these hexagonal shapes that's the closest to divinity that's the closest to god but i could then i can manipulate that world as well like i was moving my i remember i had my hand like this and the chair was over there but i could see from the viewpoint through my hand like i could see through that way and i was like moving around like that but viewing it from from here but like because i was connected through these hexagonal shapes everywhere it was a really really weird feeling and like totally totally interesting but nothing like i'll never forget that sounds it. like it's well beyond the fifth dimension <laughs> um maybe i don't know yeah I, I don't know possibly but yeah it felt to me like it was it was something that was a, a fifth dimensional thing i've had an experience somewhat similar-ish okay um where it's like i've been standing on the edge of the universe and you just imagine like the whole cosmos in front of you mm. and you can create anything mm. like as soon as you want something to appear it just appears and right. i was there with all these different souls that i recognized and it was just like you know my family not my family in this life but sure. like my soul, soul family, family yeah. yeah um but that was the space of infinite potential mm. and that was also the space where we would all sit there have a good laugh about our lives and go oh there's that thing that we did <laughs> and then if we wanted to go back and change something we'd come back down and change something right. in fact it was really interesting because it started off as a dream where i was on earth i was in a car with a group of people um one of the soul two of the souls i recognize as people that i know in this lifetime and mm. the other one i don't know mm -hmm. um but i have a feeling it's someone that i've now met since then Thank which you. is very interesting yeah interesting. um so wasn't we, me, was it? Asia? No, <laughs> I tell you straight up. <laughs> I'm sure we know each other in another realm, though. Mind quite you. possibly, quite possibly. Um, I get very much an Akshurin feeling from you, though. But okay. we'll talk about that later. Sure. <laughs> uh, basically, we were yeah in a car. We were having you know just a regular conversation. It was like an average regular day, mm. and then next thing we went to sleep or something happened and. I was multidimensionally traveling then I went to the space where I was on the edge of the universe and then all the souls that were there were then with me up there you know in the heavens mm. and then we're all just talking about it and we discussed the experience because there was some minor conflict that occurred mm -hmm. like between in the conversation and we thought oh what if we just do it differently and in that space up there it was just like pure love like it, there was no like no one cared about the story. Mm. No, one, no one honestly gave a shit, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were was totally like, objective about it all. Yeah, and, well, we yeah. were just looking at it going, oh, that's like reading a book, sure. you know, not, with no emotional attachment whatsoever. And then yeah. we thought, oh, well, let's just try it differently. And then it was like I went to sleep in that world and woke up in this one, mm. in, in the earth realm. And then it was like Groundhog Day where we did the whole thing again, but with a minor change. Mm. Interesting. It just really made me think about it. I was yeah. like, so how many times are we actually doing this? Because I don't right. think I don't think we live life this even this life just once. Right. I get so much deja vu in my life that I think, my God, I've done it all before. Sure. In fact, there's nothing new in my life anymore. Sure. Even right. this whole conversation, is, it feels like we've done it all before, mm. and we probably have. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just it just depends on the level of awareness that you have because you can experience it as if it's something new every single time, mm. or you can step back and, as I said, see the bigger picture and mm. go, okay, I've seen that picture; it's been hanging on my wall a thousand times. But mm. you see something new every time you look. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the premise of uh, multiple dimensions and multiple. You shouldn't say multiple dimensions; multiple universes. Yeah, where we well, are. It's multiple dimensions as well because within yeah, the right. multiverse, it, each each universe has. Um, multiple dimensions coexisting as well. Sure. It's both. Yeah, sure. And, and to an infinite level as well, which can yeah. be a real head fuck. So yeah. <laughs> you're saying like that we've probably done this before, but we've done this like an infinite amount of times before, mm. you know, and like, and that's every circumstance or every occurrence that we understand our life has been played out before, mm -hmm. but with tiny little differences in each one of them to an infinite that we do every single experience until we've done every single possible combination of everything that's ever occurred mm. and it's all simultaneously occurring at once sure it's just where your awareness is and where your focus is yeah right does that kind of make sense it totally makes sense yeah. yeah and how do you feel like we can um better understand that like what practices have you found i'm a or big you... fan of meditation okay. <laughs> um 
because I've had a lot of very profound experiences on that. Yeah. Um, so that's my go-to. Sure. I just, I do it every day. I just sit there and before I'm going to bed or something, I'll just completely clear my mind. I'll use things like breath work um, mm. because the body, the body is such a powerful tool. This is our temple. Right. right? In this world, it's, this is what we have. Mm -hmm. It's our vehicle mm -hmm. because we can't, well, we can, but we generally don't exist as humans in this world without a physical body because that is the way that the, the earth can best support us. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like a, um, to me, it's like a space suit or like, yeah, a, exactly. a, yeah. ar like armor, like a technological yeah, suit definitely. of armor. Well, yeah. you know, like what Wayne Dyer says, he's like, we are not humans, you know, having a spiritual experience it's like i can't quite remember the exact quote but know, you know yeah. the one well, yeah we're not says, humans having a spiritual we're spirits having a human experience, having a human experience. Yeah. exactly yeah so we are spiritual beings and sure. i see it as we are energy bodies like i feel that on this massive energy field that's expanding well and truly beyond the body mm -hmm. but this is the reference point of density which allows me to have this interaction from the illusion of separation sure yes definitely, definitely. because otherwise my, there's no separation between my energy field and your energy field. Mm. We're simply points of consciousness yeah. having a hilarious conversation with itself. Yeah, because right. from that point of view, yeah. it is actually hilarious. Sure. We just... But if we're too far in our minds and all we can understand is our five senses, we do think there's a separateness. We do think of that course. you're over there, Isha, of I'm over here, so therefore we're separate. Yeah. But really, it's just one and the same thing. Exactly. And I think experiences like um, getting into deep states of meditation, um, yeah, lots of holotropic breath work, yoga, um, plant medicine work, psychedelics, really, like it's there for us. Like all the tools are there for us. Mm -hmm. And I think some people are just, well, I, th I think it's not so much people are afraid of um, doing like doing those things. It's more there. It's like an intrinsic fear of what they'll discover, and that the fact that we are, are all one, we are all together, and there is. I think that's what people are, main, are more afraid of, mm -hmm. because for all our lives we've been because taught we that no we're. Purpose. Can you imagine what would yeah. happen if we turned around and we all believe that I am the same as you, same as me, which is the same as the table, the microphone, and the glass? Sure. That makes your identity redundant. Yeah, it does, and that's doesn't it? That's a very challenging concept for a lot of people to understand. Well, a lot because, of people's egos. Well, exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, but the thing with the ego is, I see. I find it so fascinating that. A lot of people on this spiritual path. I'm going to challenge a lot of people by saying this. I know what you're going to say, and I reckon I'm going to agree with you before you even say. Okay, it. good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of people on the spiritual path who say, "Oh, I must dissolve the ego." Mm. And the moment you're trying to dissolve anything or get rid of something, you're yeah. saying you're not it, and you're buying yeah. into separation. Exactly right. You're trying to separate that aspect of yourself away, which is like goes exactly. against the whole purpose of the spiritual exactly. and I think endeavor the in the whole first place. Fifth, fifth dimensionality <coughs> is you take the whole package. Yeah. You take your ego, you take the rapists, you take the babies, the, the elderly, you take the disabled people, you take every single racist prime minister. You know what I mean? Yeah. You take the whole package and you make it into one. And a lot of people think, oh my God, I could never do that. Spirituality is love and light. Well, yes, it is light. And I say it is. Mm. I very much think everyone is light but to mm. me light is the true light is the light and the dark because sure. in this world we have the light and the dark yeah the true light is beyond that sure. it is a very um light and i say light in terms of not dense yeah um energy system sure and it contains everything it's mm -hmm. all inclusive mm -hmm. it is the it is the space within the heart that can be accessed which is so inclusive of everything mm. that nothing is left behind nothing feels unwanted and mm -hmm. that that is a space of unconditional love sure because the un the energy the feeling of unconditional love is is the space from which things can be birthed it is the mm -hmm. space from which creation can come forth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see before anything can be created you have to create the space for it to occur mm -hmm. so you, you hold a space of unconditional love and this applies to manifestation as mm. well, you know, to manifesting your reality. You mm -hmm. hold a space of unconditional love. Mm -hmm. You give gratitude for the thing that you wish to have because mm -hmm. you already have it. And mm -hmm. then you see it unfold in your life. Yeah, definitely. Because it's already there. There's nothing definitely. that isn't already there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I had an experience of that. Uh, I think it was like three or four weeks ago during a meditation where I, truly, I just truly understood that creation doesn't come from like... Um, like our understanding of creation, like I put this microphone together. Mm, it's not cause about that. effect. It's not about cause and yeah, effect. Yeah, it's more about expansion. And it was like I really saw that it was about how far 
um, myself, just say myself as an individual, but us as a collective consciousness can expand. It's like the room that is created um, by expanding is um, is what allows creation. Like there, there's no option but creation to come into that space. It's like we don't really even have to do anything. Like we just need to, exactly. but we get to choose um, what is created. You know, if it's from a space of love, then that's what's created. If it's uh, from a space of fear, then that's what's created as well. But it's mm-hmm. all about what, what we expand outwards more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think the expansion is definitely where we're heading. Um, and I think that is part of, this whole moving into the fifth dimension Mm -hmm. because when we expand we lose the barriers Mm -hmm. and that's not just obviously we're talking about energetic expansion here Mm -hmm. but even in doing so we our feelers start to go out Mm -hmm. and we start to realize that there is no separation between any molecule that we see around us and what we feel as us there are different levels of density and I think that's where the mind starts to think, oh, but I can see that the desk is over here and I'm over here. And, mm. you know, there are levels of density, mm. but source energy doesn't care about that. No. Source energy doesn't care about levels of density because yeah. it's all inclusive. Yeah, exactly. So you can have the very light states, you can have the very heavy states. Yeah. Uh, same with different people. You know, there are different souls who are at different uh, density levels. You know, there are there are those I'm sure you've encountered in your life who um, do have a heavy energy about them. Mm-hmm. That's not to say that there's anything wrong with them. That's just that's where they're at, mm. and that's that's just the experience that they've chosen to have. Mm. And I think it's it very much is a choice from the point of higher consciousness. Right. I think the mind likes to think it has a say, but I think the mind. A mind's just there to be able to understand it. In, in it's this, a translation device. Yeah, it's a translation device, exactly. Yeah. 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 And, but the mind is also, I mean, when you also, if you go back to what we were just talking about, about like trying to dissolve the ego or push the ego away, mm. and in these spiritual circles, we want to, we can, like, people want to do that with the mind as well. Like, just, mm. but we need the mind. Like, the mind is amazing to focus and it's amazing to be able to actually pick up a tool and <laughs> do things. Yeah, it's so good for practical things like, stuff. I mean, like, I wouldn't have driven myself here without my mind. Yeah. You know, I need to know, okay, that's a red light, that's a green light, yeah, how exactly. to hold the wheel. And sure. I think it's very useful. Yeah, um, but not. I, it shouldn't be the only way of yeah. understanding ourselves or operating in this world. I think that's where um, you can kind of say, look, there are beings on this planet who have ensured that people are using their minds a lot more than they should be Mm. um, because there are souls who are at the moment experimenting with what would occur if they prevented humanity from um, expanding and living their full selves. Mm. So I'm sure you've heard enough of the conspiracy theories out there about the government and things like that. But I think there are definitely energies that are countering this expansion process Mm. that are trying to um, keep, keep the human mind in its current state in its current set of conditions Mm -hmm. so that it does not realize that there's something out there greater than itself sure so you know things like your television and all that it's it's a way of keeping the mind and the old programming programming exactly tv programs that's exactly what it is is yeah right (laughs) how highly ironic that they choose that word and maybe it's not so ironic at all maybe there's a purpose (laughs) to it yeah and i think to, in order to really appreciate and fully ex- um, experience all that we are, we do need to show love to all those aspects. We need to mm-hmm. show love to um, you know those all those different densities. I think also sometimes, again, going back to like so yeah, it's no good pushing the ego away and trying to dissolve it. But I also believe it is important to have moments or periods in our life where the ego is fully dissolved because I feel like in this reality it gives us a a peek into that window. And for that has for that to happen, we, our ego does need to be dissolved. I, you know, f- for a half hour or a couple of hours, either through meditation or um, uh, vigorous exercise or um, psychedelics, I feel it's like for us in, in the in the reality that we inhabit. I think that ego dissolution is important, but I don't think it's it's not the purpose to to always be gone. It's not the purpose to always be there. We need to definitely show love to it and oh, I still struggle with it every day I still struggle with my ego and trying to like not trying to I, I feel like I do practice it but like understand um, the connection with my ego and who I am and everything that I am as well and not push it away just show love to it show love to those aspects of myself that 
I perhaps have deemed as being negative. Mm-hmm. You know? But we don't do that. And we can do that with our physical bodies as well. I think sometimes it's, um, you know, I've, yeah. That's something I got drummed into me a lot during my first few ayahuasca ceremonies and what we are talking about before as well is our, our bodies, like to take care of this amazing instrument that we have and don't push it away and, or neglect it as, you know, operating from the heart chakra and above and that's all you have to worry about. We still need to really concentrate on the lower chakras as well and give them attention and, and give them their due because that's what goes into making this 80, 90 years, 100 years, this, however long we live on this earth. That's what goes into making it such a valuable experience. Mm. Yeah. Would it be permissible to enter a channeling state to respond to that? Go for it. <laughs> so, I guess the key, um, I guess the key point that you're wishing to address is that uh, a lot of humanity is seeking a balance, and they're seeking some way of um, a remembrance of of their true selves. That's not to say that that self does not always exist because the self is always present. It's simply um, the, the point from which you experience it. So when you speak earlier about the ego, the ego is simply a construct. It is a, a um, amalgamation of, of separate energies that have been designed to, uh, to make themselves believe that they are somehow separate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, you don't ever dissolve your ego. Your ego doesn't go anywhere. Your ego simply remains where it is. What changes is the perception of your consciousness. So when you perceive that your ego is dissolving, what you're simply doing is stepping back from it and then you're becoming aware of that energy which you call the ego. Mm, sure. Does that make sense? It does make sense. You're saying, yeah, so the word dissolution is really the wrong word to use. It's like perspective... Your, change your, perspective, your perspective will always change. Your, mm. it, is, it is simply a, if you imagine it like layers of a lasagna, mm-hmm. it, you can either look at a top layer or you can go deeper and look at the other layers, right? Yeah, I you love can, lasagna, by the way. <laughs> Good analogy. This one. I like it. Um, so when you, when you look at the top layer, you might say, oh, the lasagna is very cheesy. When you get to the next layer, you might say, oh, this lasagna has mushrooms and sauce. When you get to the next layer, you might say, oh, there's some broken pasta in here. Mm. Can you see what's changing? The lasagna is always going to be the lasagna. Sure. Your, your, your lasagna hasn't changed. Yeah. What's changing is where you're looking at it. Mm. So where humanity is heading, especially when you get to the 13th dimension, it is a place where you get to stay, see above from the whole lasagna and say, right, that was my lasagna. Mm. And that's after you've been through all the layers, you've experienced all the layers. You haven't left the lasagna. Mm. Has still it gone there. anywhere? It's still there, yeah. right? Unless you eat it, because lasagna is a tasty. <laughs> but <laughs> especially mushroom. <laughs> yeah. That must be why I'm using that. Sure. <laughs> um, but it's very much a a matter of perspective, and right. same with multidimensionality. All that's changing is you're going. Humanity is going from a shared perception of a solid reality to a collective consciousness, mm. and that transition process has been happening for hundreds of years. Mm. Humanity has asked for it. The earth has asked for it. Mm. So there is nothing that you need to do other than allow for this process to occur. And that is why we also say to a lot of people that, like when we were talking about the monk with you earlier, there are those who think that by training their mind, they will somehow reach a state of enlightenment. This may confront a lot of human beings, but Mm. that is not quite the case. The case is that... Reaching the state of enlightenment occurs, funnily enough, when you stop trying. Sure. You know, have you heard of Kutumi, Ascended Master? She spent, he spent 38 years on a mountain. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Kutumi gave up Mm. and surrendered and let go of the entire process went into the space of nothingness that everything was able to arise this is how the buddha worked this is how Mm. all of these beings whom you call enlightened this is how they all operate Mm -hmm. it is very common in the human experience to to say that yes me and my mind we have we have a say we we are going to sit here and and practice our meditation for five hours a day because this is the process been told will lead us to enlightenment and we say to you no Mm. 
there was a time when when these methodologies were required because the energetic conditions on your planet were so much denser were so much um less it, those lighter energies were a lot less available mm -hmm. now it's as simple as in your day-to-day -day life being present in every single moment mm -hmm. and that that is your gateway to multi-dimensionality that yeah. is the place where you realize that you're beyond time and space you're beyond what humanity calls a third dimensional reality with linear time mm -hmm. you're still going to function in linear time mm -hmm. and we have to be very careful in saying that when when this process of um, the fifth dimensional energetic shift uh, comes to its fullness, there will still be linear time. There will mm. still be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm. Friday. Mm -hmm. What will change is your experience of it. Mm -hmm. And as, as the planet shifts in its um, energetic makeup, you'll notice that a lot more things are happening all at once. Mm -hmm. And that, again, is a multidimensional experience because there used to be this thing in humanity where you would start at a and you would go to b and you would go to c and there's very much a linear progression and that is that is the human experience mm -hmm. that is what the mind can comprehend that is cause sure. and effect mm -hmm. when we go beyond that space of cause and effect you realize that everything is accessible all at once mm -hmm. and you you must have noticed this in your life at the moment because you are not just doing one thing at the moment are you you're doing so many different things on a day-to-day -day basis where whether you're doing your studies whether you're doing your um, your writing, whether you're socializing with friends, so much more can happen in one day and the time allocations aren't always as you initially planned them. Right. Have sure. you noticed that yeah. you are finding you were going to do one thing, that thing gets cancelled and then you end up somewhere else and mm. then your friend calls and you go off doing this other thing. Mm. And, the, and it often the, works out better. Exactly. Yeah. And that is, that is part of the multidimensional experience mm. because the grid systems are no longer ladder-like. Mm -hmm. So you go over here, you create something. You go over there, you create something. A year later, you notice that these two have come together and you've mm -hmm. created something new in the middle. Mm -hmm. And there will be a lot more new creation coming up in the next five to maybe ten years because when when the space is created, which it has on the planet now, the mm -hmm. energetic systems have changed to allow for that space to occur, that where humanity is at now, we are creating. And we're, we're doing this with you. We are all creating this together. This mm -hmm. is all the beings from the star systems, the Pleiades, the um, Arcturians, Syrians, we're all assisting you in this process. The Ascended Masters, the Council of Light, this is such a joyous time for so many people on the planet mm -hmm. because we get to witness with you the process of transformation. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. It's a transformation. Sure. There is no shedding. There is no getting rid of. Mm -hmm. There is no... Um, there's nothing you have to do do mm. to make this occur there is so much um humanity has such an impetus to want to be in control of things to mm. be in control of the process if i if i run x many workshops in this year i would have changed the lives of a thousand people and because i did that now the planet is more enlightened mm. and we say to you that that is not quite the running force behind these changes mm -hmm. the when the energy changes, the people change with the energy. Mm -hmm. When the planet changes, the people change with the planet. Mm -hmm. The Lemurians focused on the planet. They had a connection with the planet. They mm -hmm. knew that it was Mum Earth that was governing the entire show. Mm -hmm. And a lot of humans find this very confronting because the identity has nothing to do. Sure. There is no purpose. From a Western cultural perspective, there's still definitely those cultures out there that really revere the earth and you know, a lot of indigenous cultures especially. That's Very still an so. important aspect of Very the earth so. as creation. Yeah. And we know that today is a, a great day to be discussing that. Very much so. Because yeah. being Australia Day, the yeah. indigenous people, um, well, there are a lot of indigenous people who are not very happy with today. Mm -hmm. Today was the day that their land was taken from them mm -hmm. and it is important to acknowledge that mm -hmm. um, but also to remember that things do happen for a reason yeah that's a tough is one a, isn't it which yeah. is again a very big challenge mm. um, and the lessons that have been learned by the indigenous people as a result of this mm. have been a huge uh, vehicle of growth mm. for them and it has also been part of releasing the karmic cycles in mm. the last two to three hundred years there's been an increase of uh things like crime things mm. like um natural disasters mm -hmm. things like um 
the the amount of conflict in the world has risen mm. and yet at the same time we say this is part of the releasing process mm. because there is a lot of dense energy on the planet mm. that needs to be released and the only way that it can be released or rather one very effective way that it can be released is by finishing a lot of these roles and rebalancing it's all about energetic balance everything mm. is about energy everything is about how can we create something in different energetic resonances same with the meeting of, of two people mm -hmm. so with the two of you sitting here there are there is an energetic connection going on mm -hmm. and in that connection something occurs mm -hmm. because it is simply two points of consciousness that are interacting with each other in different ways that create something new mm -hmm. and it, it is about the creation because mm -hmm. that's all that's ever happening one piece of energy is connecting with this another piece of energy and in that something occurs mm -hmm. and as you move further into the fifth dimension when more and more people start to become aware of the fifth dimensional reality which by the way is already accessible mm -hmm. and has been for a while but as the awareness comes the the way that people live on this planet is going to change because mm -hmm. there won't be this need to to be doing things all the time mm -hmm. because when you realize that cause and effect are redundant in in multi-dimensionality mm -hmm. you simply be and you allow things to occur mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you allow you allow the space for them to occur mm -hmm. and when you change your belief systems and again it comes down to the programming of the mind mm. the mind believes that it takes time to get things done mm. it will take time to get your website done mm -hmm. it will take time for food to be available mm. whereas in in the fifth dimension when everything is accessible at once the time element largely drops away we say sure. largely because as we said earlier on this planet linear time is here to stay mm -hmm. but the manifestations become faster mm -hmm. and many many people this one in particular has noticed that she'll say something and within 24 hours she'll have it mm -hmm. without even asking for it mm -hmm. and that's just that allowing that surrender that trust mm -hmm. that the mind is not responsible for making things happen mm -hmm. the body is not responsible for making things happen mm -hmm. Humanity is not responsible for making things happen, which makes a lot of humans feel like they have no purpose no and control. a lot of no control. And a lot of humans have chosen to leave the planet. We know in the last week or two, there have been a lot of very well-known public figures who have chosen to leave the planet and more and more will be doing so in this coming year. Mm -hmm. There will be a lot of people who would prefer to assist in this ascension process from, from the etheric realm rather than from the physical plane mm -hmm. but once this challenge in the mindset is overcome life actually becomes a lot easier life becomes in the flow life mm -hmm. becomes fun and playful mm -hmm. and this one has learned that she plays with life very much so she just she has learned that life is a playground and every day is about showing up and having presence and that is what we've said unto her and sure. that is what she's doing mm -hmm. and so she feels like making a phone call or sending a message via your facebook or facilitating some process and mm -hmm. in um doing the action required mm -hmm. and yet she knows that it is not enacting it that makes something occur but it is simply the energy from which something happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Who am I talking to? At the moment, yes. it is the Plating High Council, okay. but it is a collective energy. This one, um, she works with a lot of very high dimensional beings. We don't like to use the word high, okay. but we would say that there are light beings who are not of this galaxy. Right. And this one in particular has been part of a creationary process of many galaxies and many universes mm -hmm. so there are energies collective energies present here today which you would not have heard of mm -hmm. which you would not have experienced um, right. and you in particular have not experienced this energy before so for your soul this is very new mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't seem odd to me though okay yeah. <laughs> and there's a part of you that knows this yeah right now there is the part of you that we speak to that is Adrian and there mm -hmm. is a part of you that we speak to that is your soul mm -hmm. and your soul naturally has asked for this interaction to occur it is part of the remembering process for you mm -hmm. because you too have a very important role in playing in opening up some various stargates and assisting humanity 
in in this process of recreating themselves in a higher dimensional reality Mm -hmm. but you know this Mm -hmm. i do know that (laughs) (laughs) but thank you i've got one question then as well this web of technology that humans have developed or manifested or perhaps it's become there and it's helping us what what role or what purpose do you see in like the internet for example like what's going in this connection that we have is this was this just a fluke or is this something that we manifested as a as a need nothing is a fluke we will say um technology is shall we say a precursor right okay the the way that your internet works right now information is very easily distributed and accessible instantaneously Mm, around the world around the world Mm. imagine that but without the need for technology right now your internet is a tool a vehicle Mm -hmm. for mass transmission of information Mm. and this is to build a reference point in humanity's mind that this is actually possible and can occur right when when the structures in the mind change and this requires physical structures to occur as well and they are occurring for a lot of people at the moment a lot of the structures in the brain are being rewired the synapse is being rewired such that the um the process by which information and data can be transmitted occurs purely through light Mm -hmm. now interestingly enough this one knows about the new light technology which works similarly to your fiber optic cables which also allow you to um, transmit for example wireless information and internet Mm. data through light right and that's what it is it is simply light light is information light contains um information Mm -hmm. Light is, uh, in a way, a method for the photons of information to travel from one place to another. Mm. So communication in the future will simply be through light. Mm. But that requires every single person on this planet to have their system purely operating from a light body. Because when you're purely operating from your light body... It is simply light interacting with other light. Yeah, and communication won't be through words or text. It would be through visual visuals. I'm assuming it's. You will still have words. You will still have um, things like artwork. You will still have. You will still have this physical realm. Mm, you will still sure. have your bodies. There will be some minor changes to the way that the bodies are structured, especially mm-hmm. for humanity. And there are those beings who will be present on the planet in the next few years who have uh, marked differences to their structures, mm-hmm. but largely it will it will be very similar to what it is now but with addition to the words and um the writing will Mm. also be the feeling behind it because at the moment what is lacking it's not that it's not being transmitted it's that it's not always being received right i get it because we don't always have the, the human mind doesn't always have the capacity to receive that information sure so for example when when we speak right now there is an energetic connection that is happening between us and there are energies that are being shifted in this body and the other body Mm -hmm. you may not be aware of it so what will shift again comes down to the level of um, observation level awareness that you have Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. when you start to become aware of the feeling realm behind it it's very the information is very holographic in nature Mm -hmm. because at the moment you take the words on their face value. But Mm. imagine if you said the word and every word had a feeling behind it, had a vibration, which it Mm. does. The words have vibrations and you know that. Mm. Um, There are some vibrations, like words like love, that have a very high vibration and there are other words that have different vibrations. Mm. And there are your scientists out there such as Emoto who have done measurements on this kind of thing and they Mm. are very in tune with the way that the words and the frequencies affect your water molecules and things like that. Mm. But um, we would say that when everything is holographic in nature, you can still speak. It will be a very different way of receiving the information because you may receive a visual, you may receive a feeling, you may Mm. receive... One word can contain a universe of information Mm. Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the word itself, but also to do with what's behind that the feeling behind that right and that's how you can have things like you have the words um for love in one language and the words for love in another language like for example Mm. in hindi you could say it's prem Mm -hmm. and it has the same feeling Mm. and that is when you start to transcend the 
the human limitations of the mind. Mm -hmm. Language is a great tool for illustrating that. Humans, Mm. the human language doesn't have a language, so Mm. to speak, because there are people on this planet right now who are who are in relationship with each other, who do not speak the same human language and yet manage to do their day-to-day tasks, mm. communicating through their bodies, mm-hmm. through their feeling, mm-hmm. through movement, touch, mm-hmm. and gesture. There sure. are so many ways that information can be transmitted. Mm-hmm. So the language of the universe is contained in everything. Mm. And when you're speaking and transmitting from that point of view, one simple word can have so much meaning in it, can have so much information in it, can have mm-hmm. so much transformation in it. Mm. Because words can transform as mm-hmm. well. It mm-hmm. is an, another energetic alchemical creation. Sure. That you will be able to comprehend a lot more in a lot less time. Mm -hmm. It will make some things a little bit redundant. For Mm -hmm. example, at the moment, many people go to your libraries to read um, your books. Mm -hmm. And there are, uh, you've read many books on different spiritual concepts, philosophies, things like that. Imagine if you could just know that information through the transmission of one word or by mm. looking someone in the eye yeah i really feel like that's where i'm getting to with that i've so I sort of yeah i mean i have read a lot of books over the last few years but now it know. doesn't <laughs> yeah it just doesn't I've, I'm less interested in that now more than ever like i'm really finding and getting more of my own education about not only the world around me but myself just through interactions with other people and interactions with the earth and that's becoming my greatest teacher Mm -hmm. rather than the words in a Mm -hmm. book and it is also a a shift from um what we would say is theory to practice because there has been a lot of prep work a lot of preparation that has been required for humanity to get to where it's at now Mm, um there has been uh, we've sent many beings and souls who volunteered to come down and do a lot of the initial clearing processes Mm -hmm. uh, and that was necessary Mm -hmm. at that point in time whereas now uh, as we said the space has been created Mm -hmm. and once the space is there you no longer need to keep recreating those old paradigms or clearing the old karmic cycles or any of that Mm -hmm. you simply have a space to create something new and when you're creating something new why read the book of something that was written a hundred years ago yeah sure when you can create your own life yeah and the other part of that is more information is becoming a knowing I mean we know you walk down the street sometimes and you just you look at a flower and you just know it Mm -hmm. you know it for what it is Mm -hmm. and it's that feeling that becomes it a lot more accessible it's that intuitive inner wisdom that's coming through mm, mm-hmm. and that is coming forth quite strongly in a lot of people right now mm, mm-hmm. and that again is is that collective consciousness expressing itself sure physically physical well through the physical body through the physical body I should say yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. nice <laughs> wow <laughs> how do you feel who are you speaking to now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. How do you feel? Whoever, whoever's... We are always joyful. <laughs> sure. We're always joyful. We're always very happy and pleased mm-hmm. to have these interactions. Mm. Uh, we know you have a lot of questions about the beings that you're speaking with at the moment. Yeah, I sort and of don't know as well. We say yeah. to you, it's not necessarily important. Right. Um, what we would like you in particular to understand is that there is still a lot of labeling that goes on with humanity that oh even even in the spiritual realms that oh this must be Pleiadian, this must be syrian this must be something mm. else uh there is a point beyond all of that mm. 13th dimension and beyond where there is simply consciousness mm-hmm. and that consciousness has many expressions many 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 millions and millions infinite expressions all and right. There are groups of energies that can come together and call themselves particular things. Even mm-hmm. this table is a group of energy that's come mm. together and sure. then somebody has referenced it as a table. Yeah, sure. Right? Yep. Um, the Pleiadians are a group of energy that have come together that have had particular experiences. Likewise, mm-hmm. the Lemurians. Mm-hmm. Likewise, the Atlanteans. Mm-hmm. Again, it's all about perspective. It's mm-hmm. all about where you're, where you're looking. Mm-hmm. So you can look at it from the point of view of this is humanity and, you know, humanity 
let's go right to the primal male female creates a baby kind mm -hmm. of experience or you can look at it and say well this is one soul who came down with another soul and you can look at the different soul groups and then you can look at things like over souls you can look at um, archangels and angels and that's all valid it's all valid mm. you want to be very clear that it's all valid mm. there is no experience in this it, in this dimensional reality of creation that is not valid mm. but at the same time where do you want to focus your attention do you mm. want to focus your attention on the human experience do you want to focus your attention on the soul experience do you wish to focus your attention on a more collective experience or do you wish to say, let's experience this from the point of creation, the point of oneness, where everything is simply just one point of light? Mm. It's a choice. Sure. And you choose and consciousness chooses, but you are consciousness. So who's really making the choice here? <laughs> <laughs> does that mean, what does that say for free will? You are in a universe of unlimited and infinite potential. Mm. There is so much that, be, that can be created and there is nothing in this universe that you cannot experience, that you cannot do, and it is all occurring mm -hmm. in its infinite combinations. Mm -hmm. um, the mind does not choose. Mm -hmm. There is, and we will say the mind or the identity does not choose. Sure. The identity was created by the one who does choose. Right, okay. Because the one who chooses mm. is the one who decides what the identity will be. Right. Is the one who decides what parents you'll come down, what your mm -hmm. higher self is going to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the one who chooses is not the identity, mm. is not the mind, is not the um, the one who is the shot caller. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly interesting because <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy for humanity th to think that it is the shot caller right yeah the one who chooses yeah experiences sure yeah and it is collective as well mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. very much collective yep so the one who chooses the energy that chooses is also the one who doesn't choose mm -hmm. you know the paradox Mm. of everything and nothing all at once mm. because how can one be the one choosing when it is the all that is co-creating the reality mm -hmm. just to confuse you further <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. I, think, I feel like I'm keeping up yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the, the important part of this and the reason we wish to be present with you today is to allow you to understand that it is acceptable simply to be in every expression of your authentic self. There is nothing that is not valid in this universe and there is nothing that can be done wrong. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of humanity feels like there is a right way and a wrong way. And we say to you that there is, there is no way that you can mess this up mm -hmm. because so much of it is being, all of it is being created by the all simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And the parts that you think you might mess up are the parts that have often being created for you to have particular experiences right. so when you see it from that point of view there is nothing to judge mm -hmm. there is nothing to blame mm -hmm. there is nothing to say that that's not how it should have been mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. everything is exactly as as it has been designed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as you have asked for it to be because you cannot say to us that you did not ask to have any of this nothing has happened to you mm -hmm. Your mind may want you to believe that, mm -hmm. but the real you, the part that we speak to, that is your soul and beyond, mm -hmm. is loving this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All of it. Sure. Even the parts that have caused you anger, the parts that have caused you pain, the parts yep. that have caused you sorrow. Mm -hmm. But you take all of that, you take the experience, you bring it back to the collective, mm -hmm. and you will say, what a wonderful wonderful creation we all had and mm. we will share it with you mm -hmm. because when your soul returns with the experience the individual experience that it has had into this collective back to us mm -hmm. we will celebrate and rejoice and then we will probably do the whole thing again mm. because it is so joyful to us it is such a we we use the term bliss but it is beyond that mm. there is no word that can describe in the english language the the blissfulness and joy of that which is the co-creation mm -hmm. because that is infinite god experiencing itself mm -hmm. over and over again mm -hmm. in its multitudes of different combinations 
on its different planets, its different life forms. There are so many forms of life that 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 we are sitting in right now mm. that it's the human mind cannot possibly comprehend that mm. whatsoever. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you don't need to, and that's okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to. Yeah. Right now, the experience is for you to be human mm-hmm. and to to accept the human experience, mm-hmm. to not run away from the human experience. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to want to run away from the human experience, to go sure. into the collective experience. Yeah. And we say Which to goes, you... Which goes is against the point of the whole experience in the first place. Well, there is no point. That is the point. <laughs> <laughs> there yeah, is, but, like, but the point is to enjoy this lifetime, to be here and enjoy this life. What if you don't enjoy it? What if you spend the entire life crying? Is that not still... Oh, okay, so not to enjoy it, but to experience it. To Just experience to experience it. it, yeah. But not to like try and break out of it into something else. Yeah. So whether it is joy if or you, if, fear or whatever, to experience it. If, if that part of your soul that is here with us decides that it wishes to break out of something, break out of the paradigm which yours has asked for, mm. then it will occur. Mm. And then the people will appear Mm-hmm. The signs will appear. Mm-hmm. There is nothing that you will do in this lifetime that will not bring you to that place. Mm-hmm. So if we if we were to give any advice, and we often don't like giving advice because humanity is able to do whatever it likes, mm-hmm. but if we were to say something, we would say, just let it be. Mm-hmm. Just let it be. Sure. Just like the Beatles. Just so. like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> they knew. They knew. They knew. Everyone knows. Everyone knows. I think yeah, everyone I agree. Um, has that part of them that knows. Sure. And there are those such as yourself and the ones who will find themselves to this recording who will listen to it and say, ah, that's exactly what I needed to hear. Mm. And there will be those who will not be attracted to it whatsoever. Mm-hmm. There is no judgment. Yeah, which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah. Because there are so many different realities occurring right now mm. on this planet and so many different life experiences. Mm. Those who choose to find their way to higher consciousness will, Mm -hmm. and those who choose to keep experiencing the other ones will. Mm -hmm. And there is no, there is nothing to be forced upon here. Mm. We don't have to force humanity to change. Mm -hmm. The the planet is already changing. The planet is already shifting. Mm. And so you will see the changes occurring, Mm -hmm. but it's not, you're no longer living in a paradigm of cause and effect. Mm, mm-hmm. So, mm. yes, you have your actions, but what if you looked at it from the point of view of it was the future effect that caused the action? Mm. Or what if it was... right? Just try and see it from a slightly different point of view mm. where it's not X, Y, and Z in a linear fashion. Mm-hmm. Because at the moment, it's very much not so. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's very confusing for you. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm completely nope. on board with what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. Definitely. I just don't know what to say. That's Fair all. Enough. I'm actually speechless for the first time <laughs> in one of these podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> well, a good 50th episode of that then. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the 50th episode. Uh, okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add? We're just or very... You, as a collective, I should say. Uh, we are just very happy to be here. We are always here with you. We don't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. We are within you as well. So this is simply one aspect of oh, I can feel that. Believe you me. <laughs> expressing itself. No. Um, but for the purposes of today, I feel like this conversation is ready to be complete. Mm-hmm. And so we send you with our deepest blessings and love. And we wish you all the best until next time. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. What the hell just happened? (laughs) I feel... um, There's so much energy running through my body right now. It's crazy. I don't know where my head's at right now. (laughs) I'm looking at you and you've like... Your physical being is turning... Like has changed opacity. Like it's... (laughs) um, Like you're lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Like your material makeup is starting to come back. I can sort of see it now, but like, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can feel it as well. Oh my god! <sighs> take was... a drink of water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really don't know what to say. I'm I don't quite know what to say. About that. <laughs> um, yeah. I just, it is what it is. I can't believe the whole thing was recorded. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Imagine if it didn't record. Perhaps it didn't record. We'll find out. We'll, we'll find, find out. out. 
Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we might wrap that up, Ishi, because I really don't know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah. um, I'd have a bit of trouble saying anything more than thank you, everyone, and uh, yeah. goodbye. So. Yeah, oh, thank you. This was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what an, ex- what an experience. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Isha. Thanks very much for coming on this podcast. And, and uh, that really was a, a, a different conversation. <laughs> Um, yep, sure and, and lots of different levels in lots of different ways but yeah thank you very much I really whew, it's got that's give me I'm gonna to have to listen to this now and be like what did I even say yeah sure <laughs> because I just I don't know yeah that's cool though yeah, it yeah. Is. yeah yeah and it's just I think it's just a sign of what's going on at the moment yeah how amazing is it that it's just it's accessible you know yeah it's just, yeah just there. yeah definitely yeah and you don't need to do anything like you said it, you, you like the word surrender just comes to mind yeah 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 and that's where yeah, it i've all definitely is. been doing that the last um yeah few months and i think it's really helped they did yeah. mention that didn't they everything's just they didn't use the word surrender but playground. that's pretty much what i was saying yeah yeah, yeah. surrender and uh be in the present yeah which is all we definitely. can do yeah okay i'm gonna go Thank take you. a cold shower <laughs> and uh <laughs> Go do something else. But yeah, thanks very much, Isha. Absolute pleasure and delight. And uh, let's make sure we do this again. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like this. uh, (laughs) It's a good opportunity for me. Yeah, awesome. That's fantastic. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just glad I could be here to be a part of it. So yeah, thank you. In lots of different ways. Um, Yeah, and thank you very much uh, to everyone else out there. And we'll see you again next time. Bye. (laughs) Fuck. What on earth? I was not expecting that, can I just say? Like, at all. (laughs) I don't know what to say. Nothing. Yeah, I won't. Nothing.